Welcome to Techie Chat. In today's episode, I will be exploring once again outside of the world of Linux and going into BSD territory, this time into the world of FreeBSD and their latest release from a few days ago, FreeBSD 13.1. Find out how I got on after the intro. Here we are at my FreeBSD 13.1 desktop environment and my desktop environment will look very different to yours or anyone else's desktop environment when it comes to FreeBSD because FreeBSD really does leave all the customization to you, the user. It's not Linux, it's BSD. And BSD is an operating system in itself. It has a completely different license ethos to the way Linux has the GPL license agreement, for example. And I have to admit, I'm quite impressed. It may have taken me two days to configure this system, but the sense of accomplishment afterwards and thanks in very large part to the free BSD documentation that is extremely detailed and may I say up to date as well as well as fellow youtuber Robo Nuggy and his guide on installing FreeBSD and also setting up a desktop environment I've been able to get to this stage and the sense of accomplishment is great I think if you are willing to go through this journey of not only setting up a completely different operating system, but also setting up your and customizing your own desktop environment. By the time you get to this stage, you really are quite attached to what you have created. And it's a feeling quite different to that when you install another operating system, say for example, Linux or even Windows. It's what you have created is almost totally yours. You've customized it, you've made it your own. So in saying that, let me just talk a little bit about the installation. This is the screen you get when you download FreeBSD onto a USB stick or a DVD. Uh, there is a network installer as well. They give you pretty much every option under the sun. And when you first boot, you are presented with this free BSD login screen. And then essentially you let it boot and you get taken to the free BSD installer and you can choose install or go straight to the shell or you can choose live CD. Don't be fooled. Live CD is not what you think live CD is. It doesn't still doesn't give you any GUI. There we go. <laughs> Just forget about GUIs at this stage. It's all text based. It's all in the terminal. So, however, it might all be in the terminal. Installing this and setting this up is not by any means impossible or would I say even that hard given the amount of instructions that are out there. And if you are willing to go through a few video tutorials on how to set up, such as the ones by RoboNuggy, it's worth the effort, I would say. It is worth the effort. If for no other reason than to know how a Unix system is set up from the beginning to the end and get an insider look at how things hang together in a Unix system. So you go through the installer and you do the normal things like you set your key map, your country, your region, your host name. Uh, you select what components you want to install. Um, it's worth noting that FreeBSD supports 64 bit by default now. This is in FreeBSD 13.1. You also get to select your network. Ideally, if you're setting up FreeBSD, ideally you should be on a cabled network. That will certainly make life a lot easier. Although, again, it's not impossible to install this via a wireless network either. 
and you get to your disk space, your partitioning. It uses ZFS partition by default and you get to design your partition layout. I was fortunate in my setup in that I had a whole machine to play around with. So I've installed this on the Dell Optiplex that I have here and I didn't have to mess around too much with the partitions. But looking through the partition menus could get a little bit scary if you are trying to retain a partition with another operating system on there, for example. However, the installer does guide you through it very well. And as I said, if you do have access to the free BSD documentation whilst you're going through this, it certainly handholds you, as you can see, through the whole process. Once you get to the end of this process and it does take a little while. You have to set up your root password and then you have to set up your username that you're going to use to log in to FreeBSD with. But once you get through that process, then you are simply deposited at the terminal after a reboot. You'll see the FreeBSD boot screen. It will go to a boot and it will prompt you for a username and password in terminal and that's it you are ready to go in free BSD land. There is no GUI, there is no desktop environment. That is up to you, how you install. And again, I wanna give props to Rogo Nuggy and his guide on installing KDE 5 on free BSD, even though his guide is on 13.0, everything that he's put in there applies to 13.1 as well. So I'll be putting the link in the description below for his YouTube channel. It's well worth a watch if you are considering exploring BSD. So anyway, we get through here and then we have to install the desktop environment because the reason why you are deposited into a terminal is that FreeBSD can serve a number of functions. It can serve as a server, uh, it can, and it's very good at that job. Uh, it can serve as a desktop, so you install your desktop environment and away you go. It can do a number of things and it's really up to you, the user, to decide how you want to configure it and what you are using it for. However, let me just take you through the system I have on here, installed on here at the moment. So if I just go to Info Center because I'm running KDE 5, you can see that I have running here 5.24.5. Because you are running the very latest version of FreeBSD, with FreeBSD 13.1, you are getting the very latest versions as of now of the of Plasma, of applications and so on, you will find that if when you install a, a, a application or port as they call them in the world of BSD, you will find they are very, very new versions, which is great. So if I just show you this website, which is on the freebsd.org website, and this is the FreeBSD ports search. Remember ports are packages or applications in the world of FreeBSD and it's here so for example I've searched for video and you can go through the different categories and look for anything to do with video and it has a description of what those applications are. I would say overall the, the FreeBSD website it has a huge amount of fantastic information. What I would say about the look of the FreeBSD website and in particular things like this, it would be great if there was something a little bit more friendly for people who are just coming into, into BSD. And I think, again, I think that's kind of what BSD lacks a little bit, but also operating systems like GhostBSD really help with because GhostBSD has its own application explorer where it taps into this same list but it categorizes everything nicely so that you can find things quickly. But 
you know this this does function pretty well it has to be said so if i let's put something like shot well in there we go shot well is there so you could potentially install that by dropping down into pkg and you can do the same same thing here pkg search shot well there it is and that's how you install applications within FreeBSD, or at least the way I've been installing them. There may be better ways out there, but I am a relatively new person to BSD and certainly FreeBSD. But that is that is how you would go about installing applications on BSD. So looking at this, when you install KDE 5 or if you're going to try this out you do get things like the thumbnails are enabled by default in dolphin of course it's the full dolphin file manager as you would expect so it has all the features like split and things like that in there so that's really nice again because it's kde you have single click enabled by default so you can change that behavior if you want to and all of the settings that you would expect in KDE are there. So that's that's fantastic. I've got it set to dark mode at the moment. And if you click on more appearance settings, you can change your your application style. I've got my plasma style set to layen and my window de decorations are also set to layen, which gives me this kind of mac os look on my windows and the slightly rounded bars as well which is quite nice but i've customized that myself if you look at the resources that are being used on here at the moment given this is free bsd 13.1 and as as per normal i am recording this by OBS which I've installed and as you can see it's running fairly well actually the CPUs some of those CPUs are running well under 20% so that's pretty good given I'm recording myself I'm recording the sound and I'm recording this 1080p desktop that's pretty good going in terms of resource that's really good i've set up uh, an 8 gig swap file as well just to keep things nice and smooth there are some tweaks you need to put in on things like the r.conf and the sysctl to be able to fully utilize your system as a desktop system as opposed to a server system which is kind of how FreeBSD is set up to work by default. Once you've done that, you will notice significant improved performance improvement in how the desktop responds. And certainly I can say 13.1 is a heck of a lot quicker than 13.0 FreeBSD. The desktop is just so responsive. It is as responsive, I would say, as most Linux distributions. So FreeBSD really have put some decent work into the kernel to bring this up to speed and it supports newer hardware as well. So the new version of FreeBSD supports the latest Intel wireless drivers as well. So there are definite improvements and definite benefits even if you are upgrading from 13.0 to 13.1 that you you will find and again those instructions for upgrading from 13.0 to 13.1 are written very clearly in the free bsd documentation and really easy to follow so my overall impression of free bsd is actually it's really really good really good and is it something that i could move to permanently Quite possibly, since I've had this system running, it's been so stable, rock solid, I would say. I've had to do a lot of work, though, to get it to this stage. So this has been a 
quite a project for me to set up and I think I mentioned at the start that you do get that sense of achievement when you set something like this up and you've customized it yourself. It almost has a stamp of your own identity on it because you've put so much work into getting it up and running. But once it is up and running, it's fantastic, really fantastic. Once you're able to get everything working properly. Can I recommend FreeBSD 13.1? Yes, I can. If you are interested in learning Unix and some of the things I've learned whilst installing FreeBSD have actually come in handy in, in my other role, my job role as an IT consultant looking after things like AIX. So some of the things I've learned in, whilst installing FreeBSD have come in handy for that as well. So if you are in that kind of sphere of supporting Unix in any shape or form, then I would I would recommend giving FreeBSD a go and challenge yourself. Have a go. See if you can get it up and running. See if you can get a GUI desktop up and running if you want to. But it's entirely up to you. And that's the beauty of FreeBSD. It's all up to you. They don't strong arm you into using a particular desktop. They don't strong arm you into a particular way of working. You just configure it the way you want. And I really, really like that, what, that attitude, that way of doing things, that it's totally up to you. But of course, for new users, it probably would be a big challenge, a big challenge. You have got some fantastic websites like RoboNuggy's YouTube channel, also the free BSD documentation. And there is a lot of information from the BSD community as a whole on setting these things up. And I would say the free BSD community is actually quite friendly and actually quite helpful as well. I've certainly found that the case whilst doing this. So it's a it's almost a five out of five. I would say still it has to be something really special for me to give a five. Now I'm doing ratings on these videos. It's a four, four and a half out of five, I would say, for free BSD 13.1. But it is, I would say, aimed at a particular type of user, someone who's willing to spend the time configuring, spend the time learning Unix, learning how to set this up and spend the time troubleshooting because I, I've had some small issues while setting up that I needed to figure out and go to the forums to look for solutions. But the solutions were there. And that's the great thing. All the information you need is there and the documentation is fantastic if you're willing to read through it. So there you go. That's my review of free BSD 13.1. I hope you've enjoyed this review and I hope you've enjoyed this foray into the world of BSD. If you have, then please give me a thumbs up or like, even like and subscribe. And if you'd like to see me review any other distributions, no matter what they are, whether they're Linux, BSD or anything else for that matter, then please put your comments down below. I'd love to read those. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>